Good morning. All right, as you come in, go ahead and like this live stream and invite somebody on. You are more than welcome to follow my page so that you are informed and updated about us going live or anything else that happens with um, this um, page. <laughs> You're able to be informed through Facebook. As you come in, Go ahead and share the broadcast, like it, and let me know that you are on here with me and where you're watching from. Good morning, Carla. Thank you for joining. I'm excited about today because we're going to finish our um, teaching, or this week we're going to finish up our teaching um, with partnership with the Holy Spirit. I've taught this already with my um, mentor group with the huddle. Those of you that are a part of my um, group coaching, we've talked about partnership with the Holy Spirit, but I think we're going to add a little flair to it today and um, add some more understanding with our partnership with the Holy Spirit. For the last um, week or so, we've been talking about um, how to be led of the spirit, how to follow the spirit, how to yield to the spirit, how to be full of the spirit. So this week, I really want to zero in on partnering with the Holy Spirit. Good morning, Victoria. Thank you for joining. Guys, go ahead and share this to your networks, to your friends, invite somebody on. So I want to highlight the partnership that we play as humans with the presence of God living on the inside of us with the helper, with the comforter, with um, the guide, the teacher living on the inside of us. We talked about on Wednesday and Friday of last week of how the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity and our partnership with him brings about the will of God. The Holy Spirit only has one will. Type in the comments, Teach me how to partner with you, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit only has one will, and that is the will of the Father. He only has one will. And when we partner with the Holy Spirit, we literally yield our will to his will, which is the will of the Father. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit all work in tandem, in unison, in one accordness to work out the will of God. Jesus Christ is interceding for the will of God. He's standing in the gap for the will of God. And the will of God comes out of the Father. And the Holy Spirit is the power who accomplishes the will of the Father in the earth. So we need to learn how to yield to, how to partner with, and how to become a vessel in which, can, in which the Holy Spirit can dwell and work through to accomplish God's will. So we're going to talk about that today. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time of sharing. We thank you for all that will watch live. And we thank you, Father, for those who will watch the replay. And as you come in, make sure you're commenting and letting us know that you are live with us and that you are watching the replay and where you are watching from. We thank you, Father, that this message, this teaching will be given in the grace you have given me and the understanding to receive it and comprehend it and take it in. We ask you, Father, that light would enter us that will shatter darkness and in all our getting, Holy Spirit, let us get understanding. Okay, so partnership with the Holy Spirit. We talked about how to be filled. We talked about how to be led, but it is important because God wants to partner with human vessels to accomplish his will. Whatever that will looks like, whatever that will is, whatever is in God's intention for the earth, for your family, for your business, for your ministry, for your church, for whatever you're assigned to, wherever your sphere of influence is, if God is giving you a ministry to children, 
You need to partner with the Holy Spirit so that the perfect will of God will be accomplished. When we learn how to partner with the Holy Spirit, we have to learn who he is. We have to learn how he moves through human vessels. We have to learn how to partner with him. We have to learn how to be sensitive to his promptings, sensitive to his voice, and sensitive to his when he leads and prompts and guides us. We have to be sensitive to those things in order to successfully be vessels that can be led of the spirit. Type in the comments, I want to be led and I want to partner. Acts chapter 13, verse two says this, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, listen, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So listen, in the book of Acts, we see the manifestation, manifestation of the church spreading. We see the manifestation of, good morning, Zenobia. Thank you for joining. We see the manifestation of the church spreading. We see God, the gospel going out. We see uh, the, the apostles um, going into different lands, teaching about the good news of Jesus, Jesus Christ and his life, death, burial, and resurrection. And the church is being established. So here, the Holy Spirit, while they were worshiping the Lord, fasting, the Holy Spirit said, the, it's important for us to realize that the Holy Spirit is the one that speaks, not the person, not an individual, but is the Holy Spirit that is giving the revelation. It is the Holy Spirit that's prophesying to you what's in the heart of God concerning you. It is the Holy Spirit that surveys our lives to the degree that he'll separate us for a work. He'll vet our lives to see if we are able to have a ministry, have a business, to see if we are ready for that assignment. So he says, the Holy Spirit said, I have a special work for Barnabas and Saul. So Barnabas and Saul were called out by the Holy Spirit to do a work. So it's important that we understand how to move with the Holy Spirit for the work of the Lord. But it was not the Holy Spirit's work. It was God's work that the Holy Spirit was going to accomplish through Barnabas and Saul. So when we are ones that learn how to yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit, we become ones who can partner with him and be the mother that our children need, be the wife that our husbands need, be the sister that our families need. Does that mean that you deny um, um, yourself or you self-sacrifice? No, it just means you follow the Holy Spirit so that he reveals to you the needs of your family, okay? So, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies, here it is, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So in order for us to be in service to God, to partner with the Holy Spirit, we have to do something with this vessel. We have to present this vessel to God as a living, breathing sacrifice saying, I crucify everything within this vessel for your service. I allow this vessel to be deadened so that your glory can be revealed through me so that the Holy Spirit might reign through me to accomplish the will of God. It's no longer I that live but Christ that lives in me. What does that mean? That means my agenda for, for my old nature is gone. I only have one agenda. When I 
um, crucify myself and Christ is living in me, I have one will. I have one agenda. It is that is the will of the father. It is such a hard thing for any human being to lay down their will for God's will. It is a hard thing for sometimes people to discern what is God's will and what is my will. You have to do a deep search within or the best option is to have no will of your own, have no desires of your own, to yield your whole self to God's will. You have to literally lay down your will. Lay down your intention, lay down your motive, lay down your desires and say, God, I want you to fill my heart with what you desire. I want my will to be that of, of your will. I want my will to merge with your will. I want my thoughts to merge with your thoughts. I want to be so surrendered to you as a willing vessel and as a partner to be a living sacrifice that involves, okay, so this is what Paul tells us in Romans 12 and 1 through 2 through about the living sacrifice. This involves the results of a living sacrifice. The essence of this idea of sacrifice is that we are to be willing to offer ourselves to God. The truest sacrifice can make the truest sacrifice we can make is to try to live according to his purposes for our lives. So this sacrifice is saying, God, I deny everything that I want to do for what you want to do. What I think it should be in my flesh or my carnal state or with my own wisdom, I laid that down. If I want to go left and you tell me to go right, no matter what's in the left direction, I yield my will to your will and I go right. So when we yield to the Holy Spirit, we have to become accustomed to his leadership, his guidance, how he directs us, um, how he comforts us, how he guides us, how he speaks to us how he deals with us. So we have to begin to be ones that can be led. And this is a posture of humility. When we are partnering with the Holy Spirit, we're saying what we want doesn't matter. We're saying what I desire in this life doesn't matter. I want God's will to be manifested through my life to the degree, if you ask me to give something up, if you ask me to walk away from some things, I'm willing to do that. Why? Because I only have one will. Type that in the comments. I want one will and one will only. And that is to do the will of God. What is God saying for the earth right now? What is God saying for your children right now? What is God saying for your ministry? What is God saying for your resources right now? Every area of our lives, when we partner with the Holy Spirit, we're wanting to know what is your will concerning this? What do you have to say about this, God? How do you want to get the glory out of my story? This is partnership with the Holy Spirit. You want to be one who can come together. When we look at the word partnership, type that in the comments, partnership. It's a joint effort. It's a coming together. It's a joint mutual co-production indicating partnership. It, indicating, it indicates a co-founder, a co-pilot, uh, the same or similar. So when we partner with the Holy Spirit, we cooperate with him. We commune with him. We fellowship with him. And how do we do this? By coming alongside, by walking in tandem, by yielding our members to the Holy Spirit, by presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice to the degree if he tells you to do something with your body, your body just naturally follows that direction. Why? Because you are a partner and partners are moving for the betterment of the mission. Type in the comments, I have a mission. We see Jesus giving the disciples a, uh, uh, sending them out with the great commission and the great commission 
uh, that Jesus gave the disciples, and we have it today, is to go ye therefore into all the world, preaching the gospel, baptizing, adding to the, the body of Christ. So our mission is God's mission. When we have a commission from God, we have a co-mission, corporate mission to partner with God's vision. Our vision is not so that we can live a glamorous life. Now, when we are partners with God, we seek first God's kingdom. Type in the comments, I'm a kingdom seeker. I want God's rule. I want God's reign and I want God's government in my life. I want God's kingdom to be in me and manifesting through me. I want God's ways to be seen through my life. I want God's rulership to come in every area of my life. I want to see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and fellowship. It's fellowship with the Holy Spirit. That's the kingdom. It's partnership with the Holy Spirit to do God's agenda. So when the Holy Spirit calls for your money, you can go ahead and obey him. Just like he says, separate unto me Saul and Barnabas for the work that I've called them. Separate unto me $10,000 for land that I want you to purchase for a girl's home. Separate unto me your son and your daughter for the ministry and start teaching them um, about the kingdom of God. Separate unto me your mind because I want to use your mind to write books. Separate unto me your hands and make your hands clean. Separate unto me your eyes because I'm going to give you dreams and visions so you can't watch and watch everything to pollute your ability to hear and see from the Holy Spirit. So we have to discern what the Holy Spirit needs in our lives, in our midst, in our ministries, in our business, what we need to separate unto him, his directives, so that we can accomplish God's will. I am a accomplisher. I am a finisher. I finish what God starts because I continue to partner in humility with the Holy Spirit. So you're not doing this thing alone. You're not mothering alone. You're not being a wife alone. You're not being a sister alone, a daughter alone, a minister alone, a, a supervisor alone, a prophet alone. You are literally partnering with the Holy Spirit for whatever he has separated separated you onto whatever gift, talent, ability you have, you need to learn how to partner, come together with, move in tandem, yield to, work together for the great co-mission, which is we are cooperating with God's great vision. Our mission is, uh, um, joined with God's mission. When we partner with the Holy Spirit, we don't have a separate mission. We're listening for the directives. We're listening for the instruction. We're listening for the blueprints. We're saying, what are we doing today, Holy Spirit? We're saying, what is happening in this season, Holy Spirit? And we're looking for the manifestation of the things that God has said. We're looking for the leadership and the guiding of Holy Spirit. We're looking for God to lead the way. Why? Because we have the spirit in us who leads us and guides us into all truth. Listen, the flesh has a voice. The devil has a voice and the spirit has a voice. Which voice will you yield to? And which voice will you follow? The hardest thing in the world is for a Christian to yield down their will. Everybody has so much uh, flesh on display because my will is paramount. My will is my ideas, my endeavors, what I want. Holy Spirit will always initiate. Holy Spirit will always initiate. He is the one that brings you into the will of God. He is the one that reveals the will of God. He is the one that initiates. You don't in yourself initiate. 
He will give you ideas. So you have to know when your ideas are, when you are yielded to God, you become a living sacrifice sanctified unto God. And so when you have those ideas, it's literally the Holy Spirit that's giving you the ideas, the Holy Spirit giving you the directives. So you have to become one that continues to yield your will to the will of the Father. The flesh and what the flesh wants is enmity against God and it is not subject to God or to the laws of God. We are able to desire God. We are able to follow God. We are able to partner with God through the Holy Spirit so that the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life does not dwell in our vessels. When we become a believer that is full of the Holy Spirit, we become uh, believers that can yield to the Holy Spirit. You want to be filled so that you can yield. So we want to know that personality of the Holy Spirit, that power of the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, the person uh, the purpose of the Holy Spirit. We want to know the paracletos. We want to know this present reality that lives within us so that we don't grieve, test, and resist the Holy Spirit. Many believers resist the Holy Spirit. I was guilty of resisting because I was looking at my own uh, capabilities. And when God is separating you for a work, when God is calling you to something, you cannot do it in your own strength. You can't do it in your own self. It is a yieldedness and a partnership that one must have with the Holy Spirit so that the will of the Father can be done because we cannot do the will of the Father void of the Spirit. It is the Spirit that will reveal to you what's to come. It is the Spirit that will reveal to you what the next assignment is. He will reveal to you what the Father is saying, what you are about to do next. Even Elijah, the, uh, it was the Holy Spirit that revealed to him where to go next. He said, to uh, when the brook dried up at Zarephath, he had to leave that place and move on to the next place, which was victory at Mount Carmel. So when we yield to the Holy Spirit, when we partner with the Holy Spirit, we are safeguarding ourselves to walk in the spirit. It is important that when we partner with the Holy Spirit, we are in a community that champions and uh, promotes this type of living. When you are around people that frown upon spiritual activity and leadership and guiding with the Holy Spirit, it can quench your faith or hinder you from moving in the spirit or quench the Holy Spirit from working through you. When we lack confidence in our ability to, in our ability, we can hinder the Holy Spirit. When we have low self-esteem, we can hinder the Holy Spirit. When we have a low self-concept, we can hinder the Holy Spirit. When we don't have self-efficacy, we can hinder the Holy Spirit. When we lack self-value and worth, we can hinder the Holy Spirit. Now, this is not from a prideful place where you have confidence in yourself, in the flesh, or your abilities, but you do need to know that you are a vessel that belongs to God and you are the daughter or the son of the Most High God, and you need to have a sense of what you can do when you yield to the Holy Spirit. When you don't have a positive self-image, we can hinder our partnership with the Holy Spirit because we will see ourselves as unvaluable and not able to be used. We'll see ourselves as incapable of accomplishing the task. We'll see our thoughts, our ideas, our dreams as impossible because we don't believe that he can do it through us. But when you build yourself up from the inside, you realize that, hey, I do have the ability to do this because I have a strong mind, because I am the daughter of the most high God. I am made in the image of God. I have gifts, talents, abilities that God can use 
for his glory. So sometimes our partnership is hindered because of how we see ourselves, because we don't think that God can do it through us, because we don't think that we are worthy of God doing it through us. When God speaks and says, I want to do something through you and I want to do something great through you, God sometimes have to build us up on the inside. He has to build our perspective of how we see ourselves. He has to build our understanding of sonship. He has to build our self-image, our self-efficacy. We have to learn how to be comfortable within ourselves. Even Gideon struggled with his self image. He struggled with how he saw himself, possibly because what he was around. Listen to me. Listen to me. Uh, listen to me. If you are around people that see you as low, unworthy, that says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? If you are around people that don't speak into your gifts, your talent, your abilities, it will be very hard for you to see yourself as God sees you because there is, unless the Holy Spirit delivers you out of that place, lifts you up and speaks to you. If you are around low thinkers, if you are around people that always try to squash your dreams, it will be very hard for you to partner with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because all around you is deadness. All around you are low thinkers. All around you are people that have never accomplished anything that don't live up to their fullest potential, that don't branch out and start new things and actually see success. If you are around people that stay in a low place, it will be virtually impossible for you to become one to partner with the Holy Spirit. Because oftentimes when you are partnering with the Holy Spirit, it's not something you can do in yourself. You are going to have to have full dependence on him. You're going to have to live close to his voice. You're going to have to spend time with him so you can get the next set of instructions. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So oftentimes God will bring an individual out so that they can be one that leads others out. And this is what we see in the life, life of, of Moses. God delivered Moses when his mother sent him up a river. And it was always God's intention for the Holy Spirit to come upon Moses for a work that he was going to do in the future, which was to deliver a people and try to bring their vision up to where God wanted them to see how he wanted them to see themselves and what he wanted to do through them. So when we have this view of ourselves, when we lack confidence, when we lack, lack self-worth, self-efficacy, when we lack the ability to see ourselves as God sees us, God sometimes has to deliver us from that low place, low thinking, deliver us from those wounds and words. Come on, somebody. Deliver us from the trauma of our past so that we can be ones that partner with the Holy Spirit, that start to believe the very things God says about them. Listen, God is always going to talk you up. Mm. Type in the comments, talk me up, God. Here it is. Gideon says, I'm the least of my tribe and I'm the runt of the litter. We're, we're not even the best of the best. We don't have everything. God says, squash that. Don't receive what the world tells you, Gideon. You are a mighty warrior. God started telling Gideon something wonderful about himself. God started telling Gideon, you are the best of the best. You are able to accomplish. Why? Because I am with you. So God will will lift you up and start telling you wonderful things about yourself. He'll start telling you things that if people didn't understand you, they would think that you were prideful. No, God starts telling you now, if Gideon, who in the flesh was the runt of the litter, he came from the least tribe, he was considered the weakest. If he starts walking around, say, I am a mighty warrior. I am a mighty warrior. What do you think those people around him will start saying? What are you talking about, man? You come from the weakest tribe. You're the weakest among us. You can't even lift a brick. How are you a mighty warrior? Don't allow people to hinder you from seeing yourself through the lens in which God views you. If God is telling you you are fearfully and wonderfully made, hold your head up high and start declaring that. 
People don't understand how God has to build a vessel in order to use a vessel, how God has to deliver a vessel, how God has to change the perspective of a vessel, how God has to lift that vessel's esteem and ability to see themselves through his eyes. God is always going to tell us that we are the apple of his eye, that we are the righteousness of God. We are made in his image. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are the a royal priesthood, a peculiar nation chosen by God to show forth the praises of him who has brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light. He's going to tell you that you are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. He's going to tell you whatever you do through Christ, it will succeed. He's going to tell you, you can do anything through me. He's going to tell you, you are the best of the best. He's going to tell you, you are the head and not the tail above only and never beneath. So when we are to partner with the Holy Spirit. We have to not look at our outer selves. We have to not compare to others. We have to refuse comparison, refuse competition. We have to be in our own race. We have to have blinders onto the world. So this is what I believe Gideon had to do because I'm sure when Gideon start moving in this identity, people were like, wait, what are you doing? Like, Yo, yo, your people aren't even trained for battle, Gideon. What are you doing? You don't even come out of this stock, Gideon. What are you doing, Gideon? But God said, I see a mighty warrior in you. And God says, listen, this is what I'm going to do. Go in the strength you have, Gideon. Mm. My God, is this blessing you? Let me drink some water. This is blessing me. When we partner with the Holy Spirit, he'll say, Go in the strength you have, Carla. Go in the strength you have, Shaniqua. Go in the strength you have, Annie. Go in the strength you have, Zenobia. Go in the strength you have, Victoria. Go in the strength you have, Yolanda. Go in the strength you have, Martha. Go in the strength you have, J Jacqueline. Go in your strength and I will be with you. If you use what you have, he'll add his super on top of your natural and you will not fail. Type in the comments, I won't fail now. Why? Because you are moving into the phase of yieldedness and partnership, being led by Holy Spirit, working with God's will for your life and God's will only. Lord, I want my will to die. I don't want my will to be filled with the will of culture, with the will of trends, with the will of the Joneses. I don't want to have my will subject, subjected to the will of the Joneses. What does this look like? When my will is subjected to the will of the Joneses, I'm trying to use my resources to buy things that I see others have. I'm trying to use my resources to buy bargain with the world so that I fit in. No, if it's two seasons ago, if it's at uh, Nordstrom Rack, I'm going to buy it. I'm not going to keep up because I try to, every, I see everybody carrying Birkin bags. And because I got $15,000, I'm going to go buy a Birkin bag. No, I am going to be one that can follow the Holy Spirit and not compare, compete, or try to follow the trends of the world. When God told Gideon, listen, I, let me build you, Gideon. Let me change your lens. Let me change your perspective because I want to partner with you, Gideon. I want to partner with you, Cynthia. I want to partner with you, Shaniqua. But you got to see yourself how I see you. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. This, this is good to me. You got to see yourself. Before we get there, Gideon, I need your lens to change. Before we set out on this journey, Gideon, because I can't afford for you to get out there and get timid. I can't afford for you to get out there and retreat because once we start, this is this is the nature of God and the will of God. Once he starts, he finishes. Mm. He don't have to stop. So he will vet our lives to see if we are capable to yield and partner. If we are capable to take off the lens. I want you to do a prophetic act. If this is blessing you and you're saying, God, this is what I needed to hear. Lord, change my lens. I want you to uh, uh, do a prophetic act and take off that lens. 
as if you're taking off glass. Take off that lens. Take off that lens in which you're seeing yourself. Take off that lens and lay it down. Lay down the lens of pride. Lay down the lens of wounds. Lay down the lens of abuse. Lay down the lens of trauma. Lay down the lens of self-righteousness. Lay down the lens of low thinking. Lay down the lens of low self-worth. Lay down the lens of the past and begin to see yourself as, as how God sees you. If God gives you an idea, if God says, I want you to be a mighty warrior for me, and you've never been in the army, you want to be one that says, if you say it, God, I know that you are calling me out on the water. Like Peter said, Lord, if you, if it's you bid me to come, because you know, if this is God's idea, for me to be an, a mighty warrior, if it's God's idea for me to win over this army, to win a battle, I know that I will win. Why? Because he is with me. When you partner with the Holy Spirit, as long as you yield, he will not leave you in the midst of it. He will not leave you in the process. He will not leave you as long as you partner, you have to be one to partner. Don't be, be one that the Holy Spirit has to break you. Be one that humbles yourself and so that the Holy Spirit can do the work through you. My God, partnership with the Holy Spirit, the paracletos, the power, the person, the personality, the purpose of God to accomplish the will of God. Do not grieve, test, and resist the Holy Spirit. We resist the Holy Spirit when we're uh, listening to man's advice, the counsel of the wicked. When we're listening to people that are contrary to what God is saying to do. When we're allowing people to hinder us from moving in the things of God, we are resisting the Holy Spirit. When man's voice is louder than the voice of the Lord, we are resisting the Holy Spirit. Don't resist the Holy Spirit because he will not strive with you. He will not keep striding with you. He will not keep working. If he sees he can't use you because you keep resisting him, because you fail to partner with him, because you fail to uh, obey him and be led by him, and you want to do it your own way, you want to make things happen on you. Listen, this is something that I've had to learn through my process, and, and, and as I learn how but as I learn the character of God, as I learn the will of God, I've had to learn that all we have to do is obey. Type the comments. All I have to do is obey. All I have to do is obey. The results belong to him. How you get there, how things come together. Those are God's results. God told Gideon, just follow me. Do what I tell you to do. Go on the strength you have. And Gideon, he got out there and he was like, okay, God, you know, I'm out here. I'm having a day. I, I need you to reassure me that you still here. I need you to reassure me that you still in this with me because God was telling Gideon to lessen the group. He was telling him to uh, um, um, send people home. He was going against a, a great army, but God was reducing Gideon's army. God wanted Gideon to see his power. Hmm. A lot of people fail to partner because they try to make it happen and they don't crucify the flesh, stop trying to network, stop trying to make it happen and just obey the spirit because the Holy Spirit will make everything happen for you organically. All you have to do is listen for the instructions, spend time with the Holy Spirit, ask him to lead you and guide you, become humble. All you have to do is listen for the instruction. He makes it happen. I told you guys this last week. He is the power that accomplishes God's will. And if your endeavor, if your your uh the direction that you if it's in God's will, he will make it happen. Type in the comments, I don't have to make it happen. You don't have to make it happen. You don't have to connect the dots. You don't have to network and try to bring yourself into a place. The Holy Spirit will do that as you obey. And he will begin to show you what's next. He'll begin to show you what you're about to do. He'll begin to show you where you're going. He'll begin to show you the doors he's going to open. He'll begin to tell you what the next steps are. He will download the blueprint. 
He will download the blueprints of success. He will download the blueprints of how to build the business. He will download, listen, we have a prophetic advantage. We have an advantage over the world because we have the creator of the universe living on the inside of us, ready to partner with us to make us shine. Type in the comments, I want to shine for God. This is God's whole intention is to be able to be glorified, which is to be expressed and manifested through sons and daughters. He wants to be the God that can put his sons and daughters on display. He wants people to see what he can do through a yielded vessel. He wants your light to shine so all men can see. Everybody that you encounter, everybody you have influence with so that your family can see who he really is. Type in the comments, Teach me how to partner God, God's agenda, God's mission, which is to colonize earth for his purpose and intention. This great mission, the co-mission that we are cooperating with together as blood bought believers is the equality of the co-founder, the co-pilot. It is our coexistence with God. We need to learn how to partner so that the kingdom of God can spread out of the, over the earth so we can win as many souls. So souls can be revived. So prodigals can come home. So people can hear the message of truth so that the flesh does not have a voice. And the only voice that we yield to is the voice of Holy Spirit. Now, here it is. If you are around people that are carnally led, if you are around people that choose their own will, choose their own direction, don't know how to partner with God, are not spiritual sons and daughters. They are religious at best. They don't spend time with God. You got to change your crew. You got to get with some prophetic people that hear the voice of God, that pray, that intercede, that fast, that are before God as a yielded vessel. In order to partner with God, sometimes you become frustrated because there are all these things that the Holy Spirit is bringing alive in you. You have desires, dreams, gifts, but you're frustrated because you don't know how to make that happen. It can only happen by the Spirit. Type in the comments, by the spirit, not by might, nor by power, but by the spirit. There are so many people that are trying to do things in their own strength. There are so many people that are trying to do things in their own power, but it's only by the Holy Spirit that the will of God is accomplished. It's only by our partnership and yieldedness and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit touching hearts bringing connections, placing you in the right rooms at the right time. The body of Christ has to learn how to let the Holy Spirit be the door opener. Let the Holy Spirit be the connector. Let the Holy Spirit. It is a timing of God. We try to make things happen prematurely. We try to make things happen in our own strength, our own networking, our own capabilities. But it is the Holy Spirit that makes these things happen. When he says, I want to do this through you. So you need to start partnering through prayer to Say, yes, Holy Spirit, I yield to the right connections. I yield to the timing. I yield to the doors. I yield to the opportunity. Teach me how to do this, Holy Spirit. Teach me how to partner with you, Holy Spirit. Teach me how to yield my mind to you for this work. Teach me how to let you guide my hands so I know how to create the art, the, the, the project, build the, the business. Teach me how to yield my hands. If it's speaking that he say, I want you to be a speaker for me, then you say, Holy Spirit, teach me how to yield my mouth to you so that I know how to speak um, uh, clearly so that I speak with precision of, uh, of thought. So I speak with precision and my, my words are uh, uh, powerful and have the weight and the wind of the spirit behind them. So when we partner, we are desiring for the Lord's will to come to pass. When God says he's going to do something in your life and you're agonizing over it, you're crying about it, you're saying, when God, when, listen, God wants it done as much as you want it done, but he has to mature you and get you to the place of being yielded enough to do it. 
God wants you to do it as much as you want to do it. It is the Holy Spirit that's interceding and saying, when God, when can we execute this? When can we do it? It's the Holy Spirit that's groaning through you. It's the Holy Spirit that's giving you the, 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 the desire to see that through. It's the Holy Spirit that's giving you the desire to see this business come to pass, to see the marriage come to pass, to see the finances come, to see your children healed, to see the uh, church built, to see these things. It's the Holy Spirit that's giving you that desire. He's changing your desire to want what God wants. So it's the spirit that enriches this desire in us because God cannot manifest his will in the earth void of man's participation. It is a legal principle. He cannot, this is why Jesus had to come through the womb to accomplish God's will, to bring us back into reconciliation with God because God cannot do anything in the earth illegally. And this is why demons have to get inside people because spirit beings need a host. Jesus. The Holy Spirit needs hosts to accomplish God's will, to change generations. This is why he wants you saved, your children saved, your children's children. Because what does he do? Replenish the earth with sons and daughters and he kills off the seed. Okay, so in the Old Testament, hear me, to destroy Sin. God would tell the children of Israel to go into a land and kill everybody, women, children, because this is how uh, destructive sin was and how it spread like cancer. One, it, once it got into one person, it, the whole generation was infected. So God would tell the children of Israel to go in and kill everybody because the dispensation of the Holy Spirit had not come. So Holy Spirit wasn't living in the vessel so that the vessel can carry out the will of God. Sin was. So sin was controlling the vessel. And we see this today where people are walking in sin and yielded to the enemy to the degree that they go and kill somebody. I, I was look, looking at something uh, last week. I think it was like this weekend. And this 12-year-old girl, I'm not sure you guys saw this video going around. She went downstairs and killed her little brother. And it's like she snapped. And when she came back to herself, she didn't realize what she had done. But it was a demon in her. It was evil in her that manifested that. So this is why God told the children of Israel to go in and kill everybody. Because he couldn't afford for sin to to prevail. He couldn't afford for sin to keep on living. So he had to kill the people so that sin could be defeated. But in the new Testament, instead of us dying, the mercy of God through Jesus Christ and the love of God sent Jesus so that Jesus now can, and, and the Holy spirit can dwell in humanity. So God doesn't have to keep wiping us out, but we have a chance here. It is to partner with him and change the trajectory of the bloodline. Is Zenobia still on here? Because the Holy Spirit just brought her to me. Is Zenobia still on here? Because I, I don't know if she's still on here, but the Holy Spirit just brought her to me. Okay, so the, I, I, when, I, when I said that, the Holy Spirit brought you and your sons to me specifically. And the Lord is saying that you are a bloodline breaker. And he is saying that he wants you to live closer to his heart because there is a ministry upon you and your husband. And there is a ministry even upon your children. And the Lord says he wants to use your family as bloodline breakers. He literally wants to change the trajectory of the bloodline. He wants to shift things with you. And I see a home that you have been desiring. I pray that God will begin to give you the timing. I pray that God will begin to give you the resources. I pray that God will begin to change the trajectory of your lives. I pray that God will begin to give you the credit scores that give you the strategy. I prophesy longevity upon your marriage that you and your husband will be successful in everything that, and I see a business. I prophesy over that business that that business will succeed in the name of Jesus. And I see a business like a building business business with hands, like you're building, you guys are building something. So I just decree and declare almost like construction or something of that nature. So I pray and prophesy real estate. I pray and prophesy the anointing for real estate upon you and your family. I prophesy upon your boys that they will be holy and righteous. I see one as a prophet and one as a 
pastor in Jesus name. I prophesied the, the preaching grace upon your husband. I prophesied that God will begin to surround you guys with a kingdom couples. I pray that God will surround you guys with people that are walking towards destiny. The Lord says he has had his, he has had his hand on you. And when I started talking about changing your perspective, the Lord says you are one that he wants to shift your perspective and he wants to begin to uncover the gold that is on the inside of you. There is a grace for women in ministry. There's a grace for a uh, ministry upon your life. There is a wisdom that a natural wisdom that you possess. The enemy tried to write the narrative for your life, but the Lord said, this is the season where I am tugging at your heart. And this is the season that I am bringing you into more. And this is the season that I'm bringing you into fellowship. This is the season that I want to bring you out of darkness. The Lord says he really wants you to begin to pray more. Type that in the comments for everybody. Pray more, spend more time with him. Because what God wants to do, Zenobia, is going to take you really um, having a devoted prayer life to see this thing through. And the enemy will try to fight the things that you guys desire. And it seems like you, you're meeting resistance and you're meeting opposition. But the Lord says, keep going. Don't stop. He is breaking the cycles. He is breaking the cycles if you will trust him and if you will obey. He says, you are my beautiful one. You are beautiful, the, the Holy Spirit said, inside and out. And a lot of people think you, you are superficial, but you really deep. You really uh, think a lot. You're a deep thinker. And the Lord says, he says, allow me to really get in your thoughts because I'm going to bring your thoughts to a higher place. And the Lord wants to shift your vision. He wants to shift how you see yourself, how you see the things around you. He wants to take you deeper. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I just, when I was talking, he brought you. So the Holy Spirit, he took, Jesus uh, came to, uh, win back the territory of God in the hearts of man. The kingdom came not to be out in uh, uh, works, but the kingdom wanted to move in humanity. So God didn't have to keep killing us to uh, killing us over and over again. And he in starting over because we see that what, what happened with Noah and the flood. He had to destroy humanity because everybody was evil. And the Lord said Noah was righteous and upright. So he decided to start over with somebody that was holy. You see where this happens. So God would literally step inside of a bloodline and say, okay, since I just prophesied to Zenobia, what the Lord is doing is stepping inside the bloodline and say, it's sin stops here. Are, are you seeing this in the spirit? Share this video. He says, sin stops here. Zenobia will partner with me and I can change the course of things and take away the pro propensity to sin and unrighteousness out of this bloodline. And then I'll have her sons, her daughter. Ugh. I prophesied to your daughter. I prophesy wisdom upon her. I prophesy humility upon her. I prophesy the will, plan, and purposes of God. I prophesy greatness upon her. I prophesy that her gifts will flourish and she will be one that yields to God. She will be one that sees the miracles of God. I prophesy that her gifts will be awakened. The gift of prophecy that's on the inside of her, the gift of healing that's on the inside of her, that it will be awakened for the glory and the kingdom of God and that your family will thrive and you guys will see the good. The Lord says, if you obey him, your family will see the good the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So it's like the Lord will begin to step inside of a bloodline and he'll say, I want Zenobia to partner with me to stop patterns, to stop cycles, to stop evil. I want to change this bloodline. So he no longer has to kill out a whole generation. He just steps inside of a generation and say, I'm redeeming here. Everything stops here. And so if the old partners with the new, they'll see the victory. But God says, everybody after Zenobia, her children, her children's 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 children, they are going to be holy unto me. They are going to be a kingdom family movement, right? So that he starts to win that bloodline and starts to pull out the gifts, the talents, the abilities that he intended. Jesus.
This is good, Vanessa, isn't it? He'll he'll begin to pull out the gifts, the talent, but you got to learn how to partner. Type in the comments, I hear you, God. Jesus, my God today. If this is good to you, type fire. If this is good to you, send stars. If this is good to you, send a seed to dollar sign for purpose coach. Send a seed to Zell. Touchdownsministries at gmail.com. Okay, so God's agenda and God's mission. We come alongside that, guys. The world will reject God's spirit because they don't know it. Religious people will reject God's spirit because they don't know it. They don't know him. Jesus, how do you know someone? You spend time with them. How do you know someone? You study them. How do you know someone? You listen to them. How do you know someone? You become intimate with them. But the Holy Spirit lives in you. The Holy Spirit is with you. And you hear him, Jesus. Whew. So the Holy Spirit reveals God's will. The Holy Spirit partners with humanity to see God's desires manifested. He is the power behind. He is the one doing the work. He is the one accomplishing the will. This is what my understanding of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, you can be forgiven for blaspheming him and you can be forgiven for blaspheming God, but you cannot be forgiven for blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Why is this? Why is there an emphasis on blaspheming the Holy Spirit? Why is that? Because he is the power. He is the one that's making things happen. Uh, if you take away the Holy Spirit, we don't see the manifestation of God's will. We don't see the intercession of Jesus. If you take the whole, away the Holy Spirit, the human vessel has no power in it of itself to do God's will. So if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you say and all of it crumbles. All of it can't work. When I, when I say the Holy Spirit and I see God's work and I see God's manifestation and I say, that's not the Holy Spirit. I say, um, I experienced that, but nah, that ain't God. You are literally denying the power. You are literally denying God's works. You are literally denying God's ability. So we have to become believers who learn how to yield, be filled, and learn how to partner. The Holy Spirit strengthens and increases our faith. Hear me. The Holy Spirit confirms. The Holy Spirit strengthens. The Holy Spirit establishes. And the Holy Spirit accomplishes. It is the Holy Spirit that confirms what you're supposed to do. If you're living close to him, if he's living in you, type in the comments, take over Holy Spirit. Take over. The Holy Spirit wants to use your emotions to the degree that he groans through you for the movement of God's will, for the movement of God's purposes. The Holy Spirit removes doubt fear, anxiety, depression, worry, struggle. He takes it out of you. Listen, when you are a vessel that houses the presence of God, <sighs> the Holy Spirit begins to work on you and he takes out everything that hinders God's will. He don't, he don't learn, he don't manage it. It's not like a lion in a room that the Holy Spirit wrestling with your issues, wrestling with your sin, wrestling with your depression so that it don't get out the room. No, he takes it out. It's no longer in you. It's no longer a part of you. Sin is no longer in your vessel. The Holy Spirit does not come into the presence of God. Listen, Jesus's death was gruesome and his death was so priced it was so valuable and it's priceless to the degree that we can't say that, oh, well, Jesus died, but I still got to struggle. No, no, <sighs> you're not 
supposed to struggle with sin. You're not supposed to struggle with proclivities. You're not supposed to struggle. You're su it's supposed to be taken out of you. If the spirit of God dwells in you, sin has to leave you. The thing is, the enemy convinces you that you still have it. The enemy convinces you that the power of the cross does not work and you don't know how to partner with Holy Spirit to stay free. So the enemy is able to drag you back into bondage because you don't know that you're free. You don't know how the spirit operates, how to partner with freedom. It's just like the, the slaves during, type in the comments, I want to be free. It's just like the slaves during Harriet Tubman's time. They were free. They didn't know how to be free. So they stayed in bondage. We see that in the life of the believer. Many people don't know how to partner with the Holy Spirit to be free. So they stay in bondage. They say, well, God is not going to deliver. No, walk in faith. Declare that I am a mighty warrior. I am free of anxiety. I am free of sickness. I am free of disease. I am free of cancer. I am free of wounds. I am free of trauma. I am free. I am not triggered. Stop taking on the words in the ways of the world, using those key words and phrases, trigger. No, what you trigger for? Trauma is taken out of you. Oh my God. <sighs> I need some people that believe in God's power. Do you believe in God's power to take sin out of you, to take fear out of you, to take low thinking out of you, to take low concept out of you? I believe that God's power can take it out of you. Out. It's, it's no longer there. When I go to look for it, I can't find it because that's how gruesome and that's how um, priceless his death was. His death. It, it was extreme. God went to extreme measures to save you. His stripes were worth more than you having to struggle. Come on. <sighs> Type in the comments. His death paid it all. The Holy Spirit is a promoter, a reciter. He gives us what to say and we say it. The things I tell y'all all the time. You have been on here for one hour and two minutes and six seconds. It's the Holy Spirit that's captivated your attention. It's the Holy Spirit that's prompting you. It's the Holy Spirit that's giving you the desire. It's the Holy Spirit that gives you the desire to share it. It's the Holy Spirit that gives you the revelation. It's the Holy Spirit that is the light. It's the Holy Spirit that's behind my word. He has given me what to say. He is speaking through me to you so that you hear him and obey. Sons and daughters are led by God when they house God's presence. The spirit of God dwells in you. You are a candidate, but do not lack living in the supernatural, being led. Remember, I said, if you're not around people that uh, promote the Holy Spirit, this is the only way you should live as a, as a believer. This is what the scriptures say. You will no longer live after the flesh, but after the spirit. This is why Jesus died. So we can have the Holy Spirit in us to win. Walk in newness. Type in the comments, I win. I win now. I walk in newness. Oh, if you don't partner, the Holy Spirit is unemployed. Mm. If you don't partner with the Holy Spirit. Don't say I'm too old. Don't say I'm too young. Don't say I don't have enough. I said those things before and the Holy Spirit had to deal with me. He had to work with me. He had to bring my thinking up. I don't have that money, Holy Spirit. I don't have that money to sow and write a book. I don't have that money, Holy Spirit, to do these things. You asking me, I don't have the money to do a conference. If it's God's will, it's God's bill. And I've been doing conferences for nine years and every year it's his bill and he takes care of the bill. Every year. But I really been doing conferences longer than that. But on this level at a hotel, it's been nine, 10 years. So when we partner, we gotta employ the Holy Spirit. 
The unemployment of the Holy Spirit is when there is no job and we won't work with him. He cannot do his work without our faith. Where there is no faith or unbelief, Jesus cannot work. The Holy Spirit cannot work. Listen, Jesus himself needed to do everything through the Holy Spirit. It was through the Holy Spirit that he ministered. It was through the Holy Spirit that he partnered. It was through the Holy Spirit that he died on the cross. He couldn't do that in his flesh. It was through the Holy Spirit. Everything was through the Holy Spirit that Jesus did. So if this is what Jesus had to do, how much more for us? Everything we do, we should lean on and depend on God's Spirit. When you know the Holy Spirit, you don't have to run for a word. When you spend time with God, you don't have to run after a word. It's just coming to you organically. It's just coming to you naturally. Why? Because you are wanting to partner with him. So when you partner with him, he's going to talk to you. He's going to get a message across to you. He's going to tell you what's next. You don't have to lobby for it. You, you will just organically be where you need to be. He'll just organically have somebody message you, send the right song, send the right thing. When you are one who partners with him, his instructions are coming to you. You ain't even got to try. The prophetic locates you. <sighs> he leads and guides, but you got to follow. If you're not hearing from him, did you do the last thing he said do? If you didn't do the last thing, where he leading you? Because you're not following. You're not partnering. The more we yield to the Holy Spirit, the more the flesh dies. The more we yield, the more the flesh dies. Oh, I got so much more to share. And then I'll, I'm going to save that for Friday. I'm traveling this weekend, guys. So I don't know how I'm going to get on or how I'm going to do this thing. Um, I may have to just do tomorrow. We'll do that. We'll come on tomorrow instead of Friday so that um, we can finish this thing out because I'm traveling and I know I'll be um, in route Friday. So I don't want to be on the road having to do this. So we'll do this tomorrow morning. Can you meet me here at 715 tomorrow morning um, so that we can finish up our partnership with the Holy Spirit? Listen, I want you to employ him. I want you to say, Holy Spirit, teach me how to partner with you. Teach me how to be a vessel to lean on, depend on you. Teach me how to know that it's not in my strength that I do anything for God, but it's in your strength. Teach me how to be one that just doesn't talk it, but I live it. When you learn how to yield to him and partner with him, the will of God is accomplished in and through your life. Don't discredit yourself because of your Lack of confidence, lack of self-worth, self-image, self-advocacy. Be one that says, God, if you bid me to come, I'll come by faith. Remember, it is motivated by love. I love you, God, and I know you love me, so I'm moving. And it's fueled by faith. If this blessed you, consider sowing a seed, consider sowing stars, Consider sowing a seed to dollar sign, the number four, and purpose coach cash app. Consider sowing a seed so that I can continue to do what the Holy, the Holy Spirit fuels my ministry by touching hearts, motivating your heart to give and um, leading you by the spirit. He impresses upon your heart to sow, whether it's five, 10, three dollars, whatever he touches your heart. That's how the Holy Spirit prompts people to give. He pricks and motivates the heart and he leads the spirit to do um, what he um, wants them to do. Um, consider sowing a seed. Thank you for those that partner with my ministry monthly, those that partner weekly so that I can do and obey the will of the father. I love you guys with the love of the Lord. I pray that this inspired you all 
all of you destiny travelers that are in route to your destiny and to purpose. All of you that are, are saying, God, I want your will accomplished in my life. I pray that these messages and teachings that the Lord um, is giving us will inspire you to keep walking by faith and keep walking in the spirit and not after the flesh. I pray that you are prosperous today. I pray that you meet me here tomorrow uh, for the conclusion. Um, and I pray that you like my page, like Sherry Downs page and follow. I won't be posting on my uh, Sherry Bedford Downs page. I'll pretty much be posting on Sherry Downs page. So um, you guys want to just make sure you hit that like and follow so that you're notified when we come on so that our, is Facebook giving you guys notifications? I don't know. Cause I don't really like, I don't like my own page. So if, if Facebook is giving you those, those notifications or not, you want to like that page and follow that page. Thank you guys for sharing this content. Thank you for inviting somebody on. Thank you guys for your support. Thank you for showing up. I love you with the love of the Lord and I love you with my love. Be extremely blessed.